So today the Septuagesima Sunday, beginning of the Easter season, and the the uh, you'll be here again in Connecticut and Danbury. In the epistle for the Septuagesima Sunday, it's taken from St. Paul's first letter of the Corinthians, chapters nine and ten. Brethren, know you not that they that run in the race all run indeed, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain, and every one that striveth for the man of mastery refraineth himself from all things. And they indeed they may receive a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible one. I therefore so run, not as not as at an uncertainty. I so fight, not as one beating the air, but I chastise my body and bring it into subjection. Thus perhaps when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. For I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all in Moses were baptized in the cloud and in the sea. And all did eat the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. And they drunk of the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. But with most of them, God was not well pleased. And then the Gospel, taking that according to St. Matthew, chapter 20. At that time, Jesus spoke to his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a householder, who went out early in the morning to hire our laborers into his vineyard. And having agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing in the marketplace, idle. And he said to them, Go you also into my vineyard, and I will give you what shall be just. And they went their way. And again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour, and did in like manner. But about the eleventh hour he went out, and found others standing, and he saith to them, why stand you here all the day idle? They say to him, Because no man hath hired us. He said to them, Go you also into my vineyard. And when evening was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith to, this, to his steward, Call the laborers and pay them their hire, beginning from the last even to the first. When therefore they were come that came about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first also came, they thought that they should receive more. And they also received every man a penny. And receiving it, they murmured against the master of the house, saying, These, uh, uh, these last have worked but one hour, and thou hast made them equal to us, that have borne the burden of the day and the heats. But he answering said to one of them, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst thou not agree with me for a penny? Take what is thine and go thy way. I will also give to this last, even as to thee. Or is it not lawful for me to do what I will? Is thy eye evil, because I am good? Shows the last be first, and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. That's for the words of today's Holy Gospel. Lord and Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. Today used to be considered in the first uh, thousand years of our church, the first day of the liturgical year. No, no, that's good. The first day of the liturgical year. Okay. Today used to be considered the first day of the liturgical year, the Septuagesima Sunday. And on this day, we have the the uh, the reading in the in the in the the, the breviary from the Genesis uh, chapter one. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. And also, let's consider the beginning of the year because we're preparing for the most important thing. And we see a shift that's happened in our church, especially in the last 500 years, and particularly more recently. And that is, in the early days of our church, the only foundation was of all things supernatural. Whether I can be faithful to a wife, or faithful to the duties of priesthood, or faithful to the duties of a child, or perform any moral action, the only way that's possible is if it's built on the solid foundation of the true faith. That is why the very first thing that a priest asks a baby when they come into the church, what dost thou ask of the church of God? Faith. And then what is the answer? And then and, and what does faith offer to you? Eternal life. So in the very beginning, if we come we see the sacrament of faith, and faith gives eternal life. And then when St. Athanasius wrote his creed, and, and he said, without this, if they, if they, if they, 
The, the only man can be a man can only be saved by the true faith, without which it is absolutely necessary or absolutely certain that every man shall perish. So Saint Athanasius puts into his creed the very first words that one must have believe in God, the Father Almighty, the three persons of the Trinity, and without doubt, an absolute certainty, whoever doesn't have this faith will eternally perish. So in the early days of our church, there was an intimate, unbreakable, inseparable connection. Almost like we say in the, in the philosophy class, we say there's matter and form. Matter and form go together. The matter is the stuff something's made out of, a table, and the form is tableness, what makes it table. And it says matter and form, there's nothing between matter and form. Matter and form are glued together. So there's, if there's no matter, there's no form, there's no form, there's no matter. They're always together. Matter and form are inseparable one from another. And so that used to be that way with our faith. That the matter of the faith, that is the actual 12 articles of the creed, and the actual living of a moral life, and the actual following of all the commandments, all these things were the matter of the life of the faith, and then the faith is the form. And the faith is what makes it makes makes being faithful to a wife valuable, what makes makes uh, going to confession valuable, what makes fulfilling our duties in state valuable, what makes man moral. Take away the faith and morality is going to be gone. And whatever morality we have becomes only a natural morality which is not worthy of heaven. Hence, in the very beginning of the way, for a baby comes forward, Without faith, it's impossible to please God, says the sacred scripture. The baby comes in the very beginning of a life, first time you come to the church. What do you ask the church of God? Faith. What does faith offer to you? Eternal life. And then, so that, and then when even recently we consecrated a bishop, what's the first thing asked? Do you have the faith? Do you believe in the faith? Do you believe that there are three persons in one God? If you have the faith, then the faith will be the foundation of your preaching. The faith will be the foundation of your exercise of the sacraments and the confession of sins. The faith will be the reasoning behind everything that you do. And whatever you do without faith will have no value. But something happened since the Protestantism. And since Protestantism, we now say, as long as I believe in Jesus, faith is my brain believing in Jesus, and whatever I think he said. And then my moral life is something separate. Hence says, and, and that moral life is one thing and faith is another. Now Catholics take this, this into their own hearts, into their minds. And today what's happening in the church today? Father Pagliarani, the superior of the Society of St. Pius X, he writes about the Society of St. Pius X over the last 50 years. And in, in a recent letter, and he says, we lost the flame of charity. What happened to the flame? What happened to the flame? And, but then he never answers what happened to the flame. And then he said, we've got to be moral. We've got to be good. We have to be wary of all the troubles in the world today. But he doesn't found his statement of how we're going to get to God on the faith. And he doesn't condemn the errors and heresies of Vatican II as the cause of the reason why there's immorality in the world. Why are we fighting with, against the evil of homosexual marriage? Why are you fighting against the evil of a communist country in the United States that became communist on January 20th, 2021? When we became, when we took a communist dictator, took over our country, and we're no longer a republic, and we no longer can be called a democracy, we are now just simply another communist country. That's all we are. How did that happen? It happened because faith is separated from life. That because faith is separated from good actions. We want to gather together with other people and we all want to be moral. Everybody is against abortion. Look at the anti-abortion movement. If you count the number of people that went to, to, on January 23rd to, to uh, Washington, D.C. in the last 20 years, you're talking about 10 million, 20 million people marching in the streets. 500,000 is the smallest number they ever had. So 500,000 a million people every year marching in the streets. We're against abortion. We're against abortion. The American people are against abortion. And we want the legislators to vote against abortion because we're against abortion. What has happened during the 20 years or 30 years and now 40 years of the fight, and now 50 years since 1973, the, the fight against abortion? Abortions have increased. They have not decreased. Birth control has increased, has not decreased. Divorce and, and remarriage has increased, not decreased. The number of marriages have decreased. People are just living together in sin. And, that, and now they're talking about homosexual marriage. Look at all the battle against abortion. It failed. It is presently failing. Why is it not? Why is it failing? Because without faith it's impossible 
to stop abortion. Without faith, it's impossible to stop a communist government from taking over the United States. Without faith, it's impossible to stop divorce. Without faith, it's impossible to stop anything that is displeasing to God. And without faith, we cannot please God. So in the old days of our church, today, except the way Sunday, was considered the first day of the liturgical year. And on this day, we consider two things. First of all, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And, he, and we go through the six days of creation in the reading of the scripture today. He went through, he created the heavens and the earth on the first day, and the second day, and the third day, and the fourth day, and he saw that what he did was good. Then we go into the, into the Mass. And in the Mass, they took him to Darren May, uh, uh, Jamie Tus Martis. The, the tears of death have surrounded me. We go, God created a beautiful, perfect world, and he saw that it was good, and he saw that it was good, and he saw that it was good. Now we come to the Mass. The tears of death have surrounded me. The sorrows of hell have encompassed me. Those are the first words of the android. The tears of death have surrounded me. The sorrows of hell have encompassed me. That's where we begin. How do we get from God created the world and it was good, it was good, and it was good, to when I was born, when I came out of my mother's womb, the tears of death and the sorrows the, 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 of, of hell encompassed me. How did that happen? What happened was sin entered the world. And what is the sin of Adam? It was a sin of pride, by which he decided he didn't like the way God was going to do things. He didn't like God's judgment on things. He was going to find a better way. It was a sin of the mind. The sin of the mind is what brought evil into this world. So if we're going to bring evil out of the world, if we're going to correct the world, we have to fix the problem of the sin of the mind. This is what has to happen. So we can't just simply say, Two million people gathered in Washington, D.C. Look at how many Americans, oh, 100 million Americans voted for Trump. And everybody in the world is so upset about what's going on. Remember 1965 and 1969. Throughout the entire world, the vast, vast majority of priests and the vast, vast majority of faithful did not like the new mass. They didn't want it to come into their church. And as they say, they voted with their feet. They voted with their feet, and 80% and, and, and of Catholics don't go to church anymore. They walked away. They left the Catholic faith. If democracy works, if majority rules, then certainly all the bishops just get together in Rome and say, you know what? Our churches are empty. Our schools are closing. This place is, is going bad. We need to see that the people don't like what we're doing. We need to go back to the way it was. But the fact is, it's not a battle about the majority of the people. It's not a battle about the priests and the bishops trying to please the people, or the president and the senate trying to please the people. It is about the war between heaven and hell. And heaven is the place of truth, and the truth is what Jesus Christ said he is when he was on Holy Thursday night. What did he say? I am the truth. That's the first thing he said. He's also the way, and he's also the life. But there is no way and there is no life unless he is the truth. And what about Satan? What do we call him? He is the father of lies. Lies are the way in which sin takes over the world. Lies are most powerful. And what is the internet media being used for? The newspapers, the TV, they're being used to put forth lies. Everyone has to go to the modern education system. They gotta go to the modern public schools. Then they go to the modern universities. What do these things do? They destroy society. And how do they destroy it? Because they put lies into the head of our children. And then what happens when they grow up? They don't stay married. They have abortions. The girls are becoming lesbians. The men are becoming homosexuals. The whole world is going to hell in a handbasket. Violence is taking over the world. Empty minds, empty hearts, broken homes, and every manner of evil. Where does it begin? Lies. What is the answer? Truth. And hence it turns out that when the little baby came to the church, the priest asked the right question. The first two most important questions. What do you want from the church of God? Faith. Why do you want it? What does faith offer to you? Eternal life. What does that mean on the negative side? If you don't have faith and you don't want faith, don't go to church. And if you don't get the faith, you won't have life. And so to fight a moral battle only, which is what is being trying to be done right now, we're going to gather together with all the non-Catholics. 
who did they gather together with everybody who's against abortion. We're going with everybody who's against uh, Obama, everyone that's against uh, Biden, everyone that's against Hillary, everyone that's against the wicked Pope Francis. Gather together with everybody that's against them. What happens? Nothing happens. A few people make noise. They get a, a, a moment of glory in the newspaper. And then it's all forgotten. So today we consider two things on the Seventh-day Judaism of Sunday, which used to be the most important Sunday at the beginning of the liturgical year. Faith. The world God created was perfect. The world I was born in is miserable. What's the reason? My sin. The sin of my fathers. The sin of Adam. What's the solution? The grace of God. What's the only way to get the grace of God in my heart? Faith. And I have to build. Then we go to the gospel of today, where the, the, uh, the, the, the men worked all day for a penny a day. You're working all day in order to go to heaven. You're working all day to build the kingdom of Christ. And what are you working for? You're working for your employer. You're working for the master. And the master is building. The master is increasing. The master is preparing to hand things out to the good of souls. So we, know, we have to remember that I'm going to be judged. Not on how many murders I committed. Not on how many wicked things I did but rather on what did I fulfill my duty as a soldier of Christ? Did I fulfill my duty as a member of the army of Christ, as a member of the kingdom of Christ, as a builder in the, in the, in the carpenter company of Christ, as a, as a worker in the field, of a farmer in the field of Christ? Did I plant? Did I sow? Did I pull weeds? Did I lay down bricks and build the wall of the church? Did I go out and fight in order to defend my country? My kingdom, the kingdom of God, to, to keep the enemies out. Did I build? Did I defend? What did I do about the kingdom? And so at the end of the day, when the worker comes to get his wages, they don't say to the worker, did you steal today? Did you try to destroy anything today? Did you burn anything down today? Okay, here's your penny. Rather, they say to the worker, did you do your job? Did you build the kingdom of Christ? Then you get your penny. So we work for a penny a day, and there is a sin all around us, and in Chirkum today, Jamie just marked, he said, the tears of death have surrounded me, the sorrows of hell have encompassed me, but what's the answer? The truth of the faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, we cannot grow and increase. It's not possible. So therefore, in the symptom of Jesus Sunday, what do we consider? We consider, it says on this day, it says Jacobus of Rajane, that we are, man was created perfect, but he began to deviate he began to walk away. And we were considering the time of the deviation. And in the time of the deviation, what do we do? Take man back from the path he's walking away towards hell, and the path he's walking away towards his own personal pleasures and the sin, and turn him back to the path of God. We have to end the deviation and bring the man back to God. That's what has to be done during these 70 days. And if you count the days physically from now until the Saturday after Easter, it's exactly 70 days. And during these 70 days of the year, we are giving this year in a special way to God, and we're focusing especially on God. And what is the, what, where do we get the faith from? Where does it come from? The truth. How do we go off the path or, of, of, on the way to hell and back onto the path to God? That's the way. And how do we get to death and tears of death and sorrows of hell outside of our hearts? That's the life. And the way, the truth, and the life is our Lord Jesus Christ. He is, he is the only truth. He is the only way. He is the only life. And so that we must go back through him to heaven. And so he is the truth. As he said also to Pilate, I am the truth. He was of the truth. Here's my voice. And so in any case, we must be of the truth. And, and that the, recognize that truth and morality can never be separated like matter and form. The truth and morality can never, ever be separated. And if we want morality, we must have truth. And let's make the truth the, the essence of our, the, the principle of all of our choices and all the things we decide to do in life and get off the way of hell to hell on the way to heaven by means of the holy truth that is our faith. Bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.